Hello, and welcome back to my series where I go episode by episode on Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time TV show to tell you all the differences between it and the book. Today we're going to be doing episode 5, and as a quick reminder, I do say a couple of vague things about characters that may give you an inkling into what they'll be doing in the future, so if that's going to bother you, I would skip this episode. Let's get into it. So first let's talk about some character appearances. We meet Loyal, and he's just a lot smaller than he's described in the books. Like, I think in the books he's supposed to be over 10 feet tall, and he's just supposed to be huge. He's supposed to be massive, and he's also supposed to have pointy ears and these eyebrows that droop down past his chin and so in general I feel like in this show he just looks a lot less extreme like he just looks a lot more normal than what he's described as in the book let's move on to the plot and I'm just gonna say it again the warder is it doesn't seem ragey enough he's not in this like death rage he'll do anything to avenge my eyes to die like he would in the book but this doesn't happen again but it's a good you know good mood builder so this is interesting everyone doesn't come to Tarvalon until the great hunt which is book two so this is much later it's like they're moving this event from book two to kind of like the middle of the events in book one same with Matt and Rand this they're not in Tarvalon in fact this means we've actually skipped Camelin, which is a surprise for me just because Camelin was such a huge plot point in book one it's where the Queen of Andor resides it's a huge city it's also where we meet a very main character named Elaine so interesting to see where she'll be put in in the future and just a lot of politics are being left out that were in Camelin, which like I guess let's not complicate the story I guess that makes sense when Matt and Rand do get to Tarvalon they don't stay in an inn but I guess that makes sense since they weren't here at this point um, but they do stay at an inn in Camelin, so I guess that's like combining those two together regardless this is a good scene with Matt so Moraine actually gave coins to the boys in the book that she could track so at this point she would know where they were if they were in the city I had never brought that up before but yeah she gave them like trackable coins I just have to put in that I'm a huge fan of this naive Moraine scene this is the energy we got from their scenes in the woods which we couldn't do before because Moraine was sick unlike in the book so I I'm glad that they kind of put this here. I see you, Portal Stone. Are you tired of me saying this again? Not Tarvalon. All our characters verged on Camelin. That's where they all came together was Camelin. So we've condensed that. Uh, the White Cloak scene isn't here. It actually happens a studying in the book, which we briefly get a mention of. So I'm not going to tell you what a studying is because obviously they're going to set that up later. And also when we meet the White Cloaks, they have left the Tuathon and are following a character named Elias who I'm still holding out <laughs> that we'll meet. So I'm not going to say much about him. But anyway, yeah, Egwene and Perrin aren't with the tinkers at this point. Yeah, none of this happens. He doesn't help them escape. They have to like run away on their own. Loyal also meets Rand and Camelin. <laughs> You're gonna be so tired of me saying Camelin at the end of this. Uh, we were seeing a pattern here. Okay, also the Farstrider book reminds him of himself and Matt, not Egwene. This happens in Camelin, and also it's just Rand. He's alone when he sees Loghain and Loghain isn't gentle at that point. So yeah, there's no like this like laughing giant thing looking at Matt thing. Just why are we spending time on a character's backstory that aren't really in the books? Like I get that he's in New Spring, but he's like, why are we spending time on this? Okay, fine, this may be here to set up the drama that happens later in book three and the dragon reborn there is drama that kind of concerns some of the stuff they're talking about so maybe they're pushing that i'll accept it then so actually in the book the white cloaks start attacking them and perrin kills a couple of white cloaks that's where his real internal conflict comes from is killing those white cloaks not from killing a wife at the beginning of the novel so they kind of just like move that up by having him kill his wife instead i have thoughts on this but i'll keep them till later and also like the fact that he kills the white cloaks is why the white cloaks are so mad at him and like why they're torturing them but yeah they are captured by white cloaks it's just not near tarvalon also i think he's said his name was Child Valda, which is kind of like an interesting choice because he is mentioned in book two, but he doesn't appear to Lord of Chaos, which I think is book six. So it's just like an interesting choice. I wonder if they're choosing him because of things that happen later with him in the series. I don't know, just kind of interesting. Golden Eyes doesn't happen like this so suddenly and in a burst. Uh, the torture scene wasn't like this. They were treated really badly because it was White Cloaks, but they weren't trying to get Egwene to channel because it was really more about Perrin and the fact that Perrin killed two White Cloaks. Obviously the Nynaeve and Steven scenes don't happen because there was no Steven and I of the world, but I do like how they're trying to show her to push tea on people because that's very on brand for her. We touched on this a little last episode, but Leandrin would just like not talk to a plebe. <laughs> She's just very mean and standoffish and she wouldn't just go start this conversation with Nynaeve. And Reds also hate men because of like their relationship to the source, not this kind of thing. She talks about how men don't like powerful women. So that's just a lot of Leandrin changes. But I mean, I've said this before, to be honest, in the book, she goes around with a giant sign on her neck, declaring exactly basically who she's going to be in the, in the book. And so I really appreciate these changes. I think they're making her more like a real person. And even though it's a big change, I'm, I'm for it. I just, <laughs> Loyal continued to talk here in the background is just great. I really like that part. Rand doesn't think this in the book. He's weirdly oblivious to Matt's changes until later later when people say why he's acting that way. Okay, I briefly got really excited when Nynaeve starts telling the story because Nynaeve heals Egwene. I already talked to you guys about that in last episode uh, and that's the way she breaks the source. I'm like, oh, they're actually keeping it. She's gonna admit that she did the source before, but then they like change it until it's just like Egwene showing how strong she is. So I'm like, mm, 
Okay. One power I just feel like doesn't randomly come like that. It's a skill you develop. I don't know. I feel like her breaking Perrin's bonds is like way too powerful for what she could do at this point in the book. So that's just very different. Also, uh, Perrin and Egwene don't save themselves. Lan, Nynaeve, and Moraine actually save them. And it's actually a pretty cool scene for Nynaeve. So that's kind of a bummer, but I understand why they had to change it. But the wolves are involved, if I remember correctly. However, I will say we know already why the wolves are here in the novels, which we haven't figured out here. Leandrin and Moraine would not be joking with each other. Lan is very a lone wolf in the book. We don't ever see him in these sorts of relationships with other warders at all, so this is very different. Moraine has this sort of conversation that she's having with Alana, actually with Lan in the book, about releasing warders. Also, no one asks Moraine to challenge for the Amarillan seat. This combo death doesn't happen. Again, Steven doesn't exist, but also like Lan just doesn't talk about his feelings <laughs> and he would not get drugged. I don't know. This just belies a sloppiness that I don't fit feel like fits Lan's character. So this Hulk thing kind of surprised me. Okay, so actually they made the warder sad enough. I take back everything I said before. I think they just went a different direction instead of ragey. So yeah, I think they got across how deep the warder Aes Sedai Bond is. This is just like a really good scene, but it just seems very out of character for Lan. Like he just doesn't do these big displays of emotion in the books. But I do appreciate that the scene is trying to show the deep bond again between Moraine and Lan. Like the eye side eye water bond becomes very important and we see a lot of their bond, particularly throughout the first and second books. And so I understand that they're trying to establish that. It just, I don't know, you tell me if you felt like this was a little out of character for Lan. Overall, I feel like this was a good episode. I do struggle a little bit because this episode had a lot of setup and I'm like, man, we only have eight episodes and did we move the plot forward enough? On the other hand, like, a lot of important book relationships and things that we need to know for the future were set up. So I appreciate that. Like they're clearly not skimping on the lore. I'm initially a little surprised that Perrin's storyline wasn't forwarded a little more. In fact, at the end of the White Cloak scene is when I thought Elias would show up. And so the fact that he hasn't probably means he's not gonna show up, which is like fine, I can let that character go. But I was just kind of expecting to see more forward plot with that. I have this feeling now that they're not gonna reveal the special thing about each of our characters until the very last episode of season one. Book readers know what every character's little special thing is going forward, but TV watchers don't. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a dramatic reveal in episode eight, and we really won't see a lot of movement on everyone's individual storylines until then. I don't know if that's a good choice or not. I'm gonna have to see how it plays out. Just as a quick mention, I don't know if we gained a lot with seeing Perrin kill his wife versus killing two white cloaks. We haven't really had that much movement on that plot line, and it feels like we'll leave it to hear would it have really mattered. Of course, it did give Perrin a depth, I guess, earlier on. On. I'm still not really in agreement that it should have been the wife. We can talk about that at the end of the season though. I'm just, yeah, I'm just not exactly sure if we gained a lot by it making that change. So I'll be curious to see how this goes. Episode four is still my favorite though. I did think episode five was good. It definitely didn't have anything in it that I was like, what the heck? I think the closest thing was just Lan. It really just didn't really feel like his character, a lot of the choices they made for him. However, I really love the actor and I've liked the choices they've made previously. So I'm just gonna see how this develops and see where they push this. Overall, nothing in this episode that was really upsetting to me. I'm very invested in the show and I'm very excited for the next episode. I'd love for you guys to tell me what you think about episode five, what you think about some of the changes, especially Lan. I'm very interested for book readers to tell me what they thought about those changes, if they thought they were good, they thought they were really out of character. Just let me know. And next week I'll be covering episode six. So hope to see you there. Bye.